We are committed to creating and sharing knowledge that empowers children and young people to understand the steps they can take to reduce their risks, increase their resilience to mental health problems, and improve their mental health. Our vision is to create a world with a sound mental health for all. What are adolescents? Adolescents are young people aged 10 to 21 years. And why are we doing this series? We are doing this series because we want to build in the community that understands how parenting can affect someone's future, someone's academic, someone's career choices, and someone's role in the community. Greetings to you all. Welcome to our show, Tap In. certain somebody and hoping that that someone understands the information there was a basic communication i could tell you something and then you could not listen or you could just go like okay it's fine but then with effective communication i need you to understand what it is that i'm saying so that you have a clear picture of whatever it is i'm trying to relate to you you know you want more freedom or you want to go and do something and then you jump on your parents when they get home tired from work going Mommy, 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 can I go out? Can I go out? Can I go out? And, you know, what is the likely response you're going to get? It's like, yeah, to get out. Uh, if you don't consider uh, the environment and you just ad undress your child in front of you know, his or your friends, then you or she won't be able to, what, to get what you're trying to say, even if you were right in, 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 you know, in, 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 in saying something that you're saying. But you need to consider that there's uh, a right space, right environment for you to convey your message. Anything party. Think Party Karate, and as Party Karate, we provide you with nothing but the best services that you can rely on. Live all your party management and all your corporate events in our hands today. Our wide range of products include helium balloons, toys, candy gifts, jumping castles, candy floss, popcorn machines, stretch tents, and just to mention a few, visit us today. Anything party, think party, karate. Hello everyone, welcome to our show, Tap In. I'm Tawanda Mureba, your host, and today we are going to discuss about communication. So today in the studio, uh, I have, uh, can you introduce yourself, the guests that we have, starting from you up to? Okay, my name is Maria Mandaza. I'm a public health and community development practitioner and then coming from PYGM organization. Okay, thank you, Noria. Hello, Tawanda. I'm Dr. Olga Nal. I'm a clinical and educational psychologist in private practice, and I'm also a lecturer at the University of Zimbabwe. Okay, thank you so much for your time, Doc. Hello, Tawanda. Thank you for having me. I'm Ruben Borozengwe. I'm a psychology degree graduate and a volunteer at Advocate Foundation. Okay, thank you so much, Rovimbo. Uh, all right, so today we're going to discuss about communication. Uh, Doc, do you uh, have anything to add on from what she has just um, said? But I'm really delighted that Nuria mentioned that children learn by modeling. So you mm -hmm. have to set that example. Um, more than words, and that's your hearing and listening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they learn by copying what they see. That's how we learn as human beings. And I think, therefore, I'm glad you brought it up because it's so important. You cannot tell your child to do or not to do something if you yourself are doing it. It's just not going to no. go at all. Uh, you can't tell your child to stop smoking if, yes. if you're smoking. <laughs> exactly. I always yeah. tell parents, you know, when we have talks for parents, par parenting talks, you know, you cannot tell your child you cannot drink or get drunk and then your house is full of drinks and they see you drinking and getting drunk with your friends. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you have anything to add on from what you said? I, I can just basically add the statement, seeing is believing. What okay. you see is what you believe. Mm -hmm. right. So if you say don't drink, but I see you drinking, I believe then that you're just saying it. 
but I believe that you're doing it because it's the right thing to do. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, okay, so can you add on on how to build trust and confidence? Okay, okay. so some are the factors that can help build uh, trust and confidence in our children is reflective responding. Here we're talking about uh, reflecting more than reacting. A child is messed up, is a mistake. Reacting really will just make it worse than reflecting, trying to understand where the child is coming from. So a good example could be, be a thermostat and a thermometer. A thermometer can respond to temperature increase and decrease slowly, taking time, adapting to the environment. But the thermometer, the moment you just test me, the results are there, then it just goes back to zero. So the same thing works with the, when you're dealing with our children. If you just become a thermometer, it's all about do's and don'ts. No sex before marriage. That's all. But if you are a thermostat, okay, let's talk about sex then. You're a teenager, you're on puberty stage, these things are real, they are happening. Mm -hmm. So let's talk, let, yeah, let's say that child is already indulged into. I know it will be shocking. Yes. Your daughter coming in 12 years and saying, I know it will be shocking, but okay. as a child, I'm sure we're going to learn about that. But you really need to understand, okay, how does it happen? Oh, okay, let's just say this, my child, you know, sex comes in later on stage. Try to understand, talk, you know, that way you can what, build trust. That child will come and be, come and be even tomorrow with another secret. Because they will know that you know they can trust you, they can have confidence in you, that you don't just react and just set my do's and don'ts at all. Um, another issue could be every listening in, I'm sure it has been also said, it's all about listening again. If you listen to your child, it shows that you are valuing them, it shows that whatever she or he say is important, so they can have trust in you. That will help again build the trust and confidence that we are trying to build in our teenagers or in our adolescents. Because we understand that the reasons why we are having this battle between parents and adults, we, 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 we have all really been listening to them. We have also our, our standards or what we want as parents. And now with their generation gap, we are not just clicking. So if you have a listening ear, we will try to understand where they are coming from, then we can reach a common ground. And that will work uh, build trust. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, what then will happen when we fail to build trust when parents actually failed to build trust with their adolescents talk what then will happen well it definitely makes the relationship much more strained mm -hmm. and it also teaches um children i'm not going to say bad behavior but behavior that's not going to be conducive later on in life because when it fails what do they go they give you the silent treatment or they sulk or they storm off and you know, if you respond and you engage at their level, then they realize that they have a form of control over you, which is also not helpful. So we have to remain the adults and yes, <laughs> lead by example and take a time out if we need to, because um, doing exactly what Maria said, responding, uh, reacting rather than taking time to um, get ourselves together and knowing what's best, you know. And so what I always suggest is that you say to your team, look, um, giving me the silent treatment or not communicating, I understand that it's probably the only skill you know right now to cope with whatever <laughs> issue you are dealing with, but it's not going to solve the problem. So sure. Go off, I'm here and I'm waiting for you to come and talk to me uh, rationally and more logically. But in the meantime, and this is going to be very controversial, <laughs> no technology. <laughs> Go off, think about it, calm down and make sure that your team knows that you're there and waiting and that you are not going to judge or attack or condemn or simply punish, but that you are willing to hear them because very often also what adolescents do is they don't come out with the mm. actual problem straight away they'll mm. sort of mm. skirt around it and test the waters to see how the parent or the adult you know mm. it may not be a parent it may be a teacher or another adult how they're going to respond before they actually go in with the real problem. So you were talking about teens and sex. 
it's highly unlikely that your daughter is going to come to you and say, hey, hey, mom, you know, that was so great. <laughs> They're more likely that you say, oh, mom, you know, there's this girl at school and, <laughs> and to see how you're going to respond before they open up. So I think it's to remain calm, to remain balanced, to let them know in a loving way that you're there for them. But at the same time, maintaining that parent-child respectful distance or relationship. So they must know that you are the parent and it doesn't matter how they communicate with you, there has to be mutual respect. Okay. And that is absolutely not negotiable. Okay, uh, now uh, what will then happen when uh, the parent is not able to build trust? Is able or not able? Is able. Able, okay. Yeah. So we understand that we have this relationship where the child looks up to the parent and the parent has certain expectations towards the child, right? Mm -hmm. If there is the trust that we are saying we want to build, mm -hmm. most likely that relationship is going to be very, very healthy because you're having the parent getting what they want while the child is also getting what they want, while it's everyone is working together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when we have... A, a relationship that's filled with trust, you have a parent who can actually come down to the child and say, look, listen, this is what is going to happen most probably if you don't do this. So I was hoping you would listen to me, you would follow the advice I am giving you. And then the child would openly say, mom, I think I'm going to follow that because, or I don't actually understand or get what you're saying because of this and that. Because these people understand each other. These people know if they fall, the other one's going to actually catch the other. So if parents manage to have trust, build trust with their children, we're going to have a situation where a lot of the things that are socially happening, like early sex, like teenage pregnancies, like drug addiction, before a child is actually a complete drug addict, a parent would have sensed that something mm -hmm. is about to happen, something okay. has happened. Mm -hmm. For example, I sensed my niece had a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. The mother right. didn't know. She was like, oh, does she? I'm mm -hmm. like, yes, she does. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a relationship where my niece trusts me so bad and so good that she opens up and goes like, oh, you know what? So this is what happened and this is what happened. But don't tell mom. Why? Because she's trying to get you to be the bridge that helps her cross over and go to Canaan most probably. So you find if a parent has trust, you are able to listen. You are able to get information without even fighting so hard for it, without even having tantrums growing up. Mm. And that's healthy because if your child has a healthy relationship with you at home, they automatically have healthy relationships outside. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Yes. All right. Uh, do you have anything to add on? Yeah, I wanted to say, Jordan, even if uh, the attempts fail, mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, we are adults. We, we can't exactly. give up on our children. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I know parenting the 21st century is difficult and it, it's going to, to fail. Exactly. Why? Because of technology, mm -hmm. communication, and even the cultural barriers. It's exactly. what we used to believe that you know, you don't give your child the time to, need to talk to you, they just need to know that they're in the adult. But we, we just have to try because obviously, uh, as we you know, in the 21st century. Attempts are going to fail. But what I'm trying to say is we just have to keep going. We need to just, you know, we fall up our sleeves and understand that parenting nowadays is going to be difficult than before because of the technology and globalization and other factors that have been, but we just need to try. Okay, I yeah. think if you maintain a relationship based, like you were saying, on love and mutual respect, um, I think you can achieve a lot. And ideally, you want to have a relationship with your child where your child is going to come to you first if they have a problem or an issue, rather than turning to, like you were saying, social media or friends or whatever. You want to be that parent who is the security for the child, who is that rock where they know that they're always safe because adolescence is a time for exploring and building towards independence. But in order to do that, you need to know that you have a safe place to come back to. And so as a parent, if you can give that huge gift of love to your child, where the child has secure boundaries, loving boundaries, 
and they can come back to you and certainly to you first to deal with issues, then I think that is going to make a huge difference to both of you, to the child because they know that they can turn to you and be supported and to you because you're going to be a little more comfortable mm -hmm. that the child will turn to you before anyone else and make more responsible decisions, hopefully. Okay. So, therefore, I feel, so we need to have more and more of these kind of seminars and workshops. Yes. Mm -hmm. Education, information dissemination. Mm -hmm. Because like I am always on, uh, or referring to, we are not living in those days. Mm -hmm. So even if you want to maintain your, your cultural values that you don't talk to your child on matters like make sex and drugs, it will not help. That mm -hmm. uh, attempt will fail. Yes. Therefore, if we can keep on going, educating the public, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a seminars, workshops on parent adults, I'm sure well, whatever you have in your mind, you know, you will set it aside and try to move on. Mm -hmm. And make time for your teens mm -hmm. as well. I know we're all leading very busy, very stressful lives, but I think if you can make time for to create a safe space for that discussion, even if it's just having a cup of tea after work together exactly. with them, exactly. or, um, helping with some homework or showing an interest in what they do. You know? yeah. I think that's really important. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, let's say now we've come to the worst. Uh, let's say we uh, how then to respond when attempt to communication fail. Doc is directed to you. How then do we respond when communication? Well, as I said before, you know, um, we do need to remain the parents, so we do need to maintain those loving boundaries and trying to explain to the child that you are here for them. Yeah. At the same time, giving them some space, some time to process what they need to process. Um, but I think sometimes family can also be a help, or if if you really cannot, you know, calling like you were saying that your niece <laughs> speaks to you rather <laughs> than her or before her own mother. You yeah. know, finding someone that can be uh, a sort of channel, channel, and conducive, <laughs> and taking time yourself often to come sort of calm down, get your emotions in check, not go down to the, the sort of emotional level of your child and returning with a, a mature attitude, calm attitude, mm -hmm. but letting them know lovingly you are there. There's also people like, you know, youth organisations that are very helpful, yeah. religious leaders, you know, there's, there's always someone who can help. I mean, I know I was always closer to my grandmother than my mother, and I always <laughs> ran to her first yeah. before sort of, well, hoping, like you say, sometimes <laughs> it's that go between channels yeah. and change the way. Exactly. Um, and there's really nothing wrong with that. No, but okay. let's work towards what Rubimbo said and building really good, trusting, loving relationships exactly. with our children. That's okay, uh, I have a question here. Uh, like, uh, uh, what causes uh, a teenager girl uh, to be rude uh, on their mothers, and while at the same time they are mm -hmm. more passionate and they are more affectionate with their fathers? What is there any explanation <laughs> there? Personalities in a lot of cases, often the mother is the, even though you men like to think that you are the authority at home, <laughs> very often, am I right? It's more so who has to do the day to day um, disciplining and boundaries and things like that. Um, yeah, it could be a number of things, but yes, quite right, girls do respond often. And is it because dads are more indulgent with their daughters? <laughs> <laughs> Question after you, Tawanda. Ah, is it so? Maybe you didn't need to change it. Still after a week, your duties as a mother will be waiting for you. And dads, maybe they'll be on the TV. <laughs> 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 so that's why I, I, I think maybe the reason why so fathers are lenient. Okay. Exactly. Uh, okay. Uh, um, uh, I think it's also the issue of uh, like the girl child is is, is always um, affectionate to the father, and the son is always you know 
very close to the mother. I think there's also the issues to do some favors. You know, we as parents sometimes <laughs> you you tend to 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 to, to favor uh, a different uh, gender or maybe like okay, I'm the father. You know, then this is my girl. You know, so I should maybe treat her in a certain way, and then this is the boy. No. You know, I, I can't treat yeah, like I, I can't. You know, I can't. That, uh, I can't. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He should be a man. He should be, maybe uh, 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 man up. I don't know, but maybe something like that. Ruben, do you have anything to add on? Well, I, I think that's what Ruben was talking about: gender <laughs> exactly. roles and yeah. things yeah, exactly, like that. Yeah. You know, stereotypes. Uh, exactly. I get on absolutely the same very well with all four of my children. Wow. <laughs> no favorites. I'm going on camera. I absolutely have no favorites. They might disagree, but I say no favorites. I have some feeling that there was you trying to, to, to explain yourself. <laughs> okay, so Tawanda, I feel like the reason why most probably girls are a bit more loving to, to the dad is more or less like the dad the dad will not really be like the mom. The mom says, <laughs> come here. The dad is going to be like, oh, my princess, why don't you come here? <laughs> There's always a different communication that comes from, from the different parents. And the, the dad will always go like, Tawanda, I want you to come here. And when it's remembered, oh, remember, do you have time? Can you come? You know, there's always this difference in tone, maybe in the, the way that the parent is trying to mold the person to be. The father is always trying to mold the son to be a man yeah, who yeah, can yeah. stand in for himself, who That's can protect true. the family. So the dad is trying to show Tawanda, like, Tawanda, check, when you become a man, I want you to treat women like this. I want you to take care of your sister. I want you to take care of your mother. And then but, when it's, it's, the, it's, it's the girl, mothers are loving. But don't you think uh, it also affect uh, the communication now? Back to our topic. It does affect the communication, it, right? It, yes, it does. In what way now? Now we're looking at a situation where we're saying, do you have trust in your relationship? Do you trust your father enough to know that whatever it is that he's doing or whatever channel it is that he's putting you on, it's for your own good? Do you understand the way he communicates with you? Do you feel that you're in sync with what he says? Because if you do not have a good communication foundation, let, let's look at it like this. If it's a house, right, it needs to have a strong foundation. You could try to put rocks, you could try to build, you could try to put cement, but eventually if something just shakes off the trust that is there, that building is going to collapse. Okay. So whatever relationship, whatever way we may communicate, because yes, there are relationships where parents are filled with trust and love and everything, right? Mm -hmm. But there are always other factors like anger. There are situations that will always happen that cannot be controlled, that will test your patience. But still, whenever your patience is tasted, your anger is tasted, do you still have that foundation that's strong for you to understand, no, my mother is just angry, but she loves me. My father is just angry, but he loves me. Okay. If you have that foundation, then everything is set. Okay, Dr. Dave, anything to say? Oh, I was just going to say that also there's personality issues and likes and dislikes and what you have in common. Mm -hmm. So it's likely that if your teen is facing some issues, depending on what the issue is, they may also feel more comfortable going to either the mother or the father, depending. Okay. And, and yeah, I also wanted to say, if we're going to treat our, our children differently because of gender, it will definitely affect the communication. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if I'm close to my dad every time and I feel comfortable, but there are other feminine issues mm -hmm. which I, 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 I am not able to communicate with me, but in as much as we are so you know so close mm -hmm. so really we, we mustn't you know put gender mm -hmm. you know when we are bringing up our children because when it comes to some things even the boy the my, myself i got two sons and a daughter in as much as i might be close to my boys but then there are some masculine issues i will not even understand each like when things the time comes so how would i going to explain that you know you're not going to use my energy <laughs> just like it, you know all your so the, <laughs> oh, right. the father is close to that so even if they want to get something, we will not get even uh, a challenge. And I think finally what we also need to work as parents, if there are two parents involved, whether they're together or not together, is to work as a team. Mm -hmm. I think there's nothing mm -hmm. worse with parenting, communication, discipline, every aspect, foundation building, is if the parents do not present a united front. Mm -hmm.
Okay, uh, yeah, I think you raised a very, very important question. Uh, I, uh, we, we, as parents, sometimes, uh, you know, let's say a father threatened to beat up a child or maybe threatened to do something as a form of punishment. If I not the mother would like go on, uh, you know, uh, like you know, they, 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 like they they they, uh, they just try to 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 talk like I know your dad is wrong, you know, he should have said that, you know, no, privately with the mother exactly. and the child, and yeah. So that's actually wrong. I think mm -hmm. as parenting, they need to come up with a team to make sure that this is what we want for our kids, mm -hmm. right? We want one or one, two, three. If even if they don't agree. But they shouldn't show that in yes. front and of the never undermine exactly. each mm. other behind mm. each other's backs. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So um that's your foundation. Uh, maybe, to, <laughs> yeah. uh, maybe to wrap up, uh let's just uh, conclude uh, our discussion. Uh, I'll start with you, Rubimbo, just to conclude to say something uh, on our viewers who are watching us. So I feel that it's very, very important for parents to have effective communication with their children. Not only because it's going to help them to, to communicate in their, in, their, in their family setup or in their house setup, but whatever happens, charity begins at home. Whatever you mold at home is what goes out there. You don't want a situation where what you mold is a monster out there. And whatever happens out there, they bring back home. So you're trying to create a situation where you know your communication with your child is safe. Your child has a person they can they can communicate with. Just as Dr. Older said, you need to have a situation where your home is a safe space, right? Your home is supposed to be a safe space for your child. Yes. Okay, Doc, anything to You said it so well. I mean, yeah. <laughs> more but just love mutual respect a safe base where your teenagers can do what teenagers are supposed to do and yeah. that is to explore the world and um, build their independence and start moving on to their next life stage yeah. but just love kindness respect okay do you have anything to say no. yeah all relationship they need to have a foundation which is trust so they should be built on trust. If a child has trust in you, then they are confident with their secrets. You don't want to be the last person to know about what's happening in your child. Or discover this later on in life, where is the good to avoid it in the infant stage. And trust is built in those formative years, like zero to eight years. So zero to eight years, let's learn to do uh, some of the tips that I've mentioned and other that you're going to be researching as parents. So age parents, build trust with their children, listen to them, be consistent, practice what you preach, if they, are, they can trust you, then they can trust you with anything. Okay, uh, what a show. Uh, thank you so much, Noria, for having for having us. And also, thank you so much, Doc. Thank you. For having thank you, Rubimbo. Thank you, Doug. Okay, uh, so we've come to the end of our show, uh, communication. Uh, thank you so much for having us, also our viewers. And don't forget to check in next week. Anything party, think party karate. And as party karate, we provide you with nothing but the best services that you can rely on. Live all your party management and all your corporate events in our hands today. Our wide range of products include helium balloons, toys, candy gifts, jumping castles, candy floss, popcorn machines, stretch tents, and just to mention a few. Visit us today. Anything party, think party, karate.